Well, hello, you're very, very welcome. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about how I got to choose a set of 12 colors for Horridam Aquarel by Schmincke and what I did with the colors I chose. Well, as you can imagine, when I was asked by Schmincke to come up with a set of 12 colors for the Horridam Aquarel range, I was absolutely delighted. I mean, you know, it's the kind of thing that every watercolor artist is just like what me my my own palette of colors i was so delighted and it was thanks to kira who works in um universal art supplies in dublin who um they work very closely with schminka and um I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what kira said but anyway i was asked to come up with a palette and it could have anything between six and twelve colors and I went with the 12 as an urban sketcher, which is what I primarily am. I do like to have very bright colors because I always feel you can tone down your color from your pan, but you can't brighten it up. So that's that's where I was coming from. So Kira sent me home with um, a dot card. This is what she sent me home with do, 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 140 colors. Or the mackerel, and it was lovely and new, and uh, looked almost like this, apart from those colours. Actually, do you know what? The way those colours are, and let me explain what happened. So when I got home, to my delight, I realised I had another one of these things that I'd been given at a um, at a conference. I think it was a symposium some years earlier. Um, so I figured I would swatch up all the colours using the original one i had um but i quickly ran out of colors because you don't get a huge amount on a dot card and especially if you are going to you know decide upon a color or two well you're going to be using them again and again because you have to make tons and tons of mixes first thing i did was swatch out the colors so this was my yellow and orange and purple beginnings of the blues and this is the blues and browns and greys and then my next job after that was to decide on 12 colors so this is the page where i uh mix them together the i begin to whittle them down and on this color chart you can see the colors i was beginning to settle upon so you can see i couldn't decide between the two blues here i was at that for ages but the others are pretty much decided and in the end i came up with these 12 colors here and i'm going to go through them with you one by one so here we have uh lemon yellow which was aureolin to begin with a really aureolin hue but my mom Cindy, said that it can go gray over time so I ditched it and I went with the lemon yellow. Nice clean yellow, particularly in the Schmincke brand. Next, we have transparent orange. I do like a ready-made orange. Quinacridone red light, fabulous for skin tones when mixed with yellow ochre or burnt sienna or burnt umber or any one of a mix of any of those. Just change your dilution and you'll get great skin tones. Magenta is vital because it's a beautiful clean pink and makes gorgeous blues when mixed with uh, sorry gorgeous purples when mixed with some of those blues that you see there and the next one was a uh, cerulean blue hue was very torn between that one and helio cerulean so that's Cer that's helio cerulean and the other one's cerulean blue hue and in the end there was so little between them but i went with the cerulean blue hue can't remember why there was a good reason it'll come to me can't remember exactly why if it comes to me i'll tell you next one was ultramarine finest a slightly granulating color that's just useful useful nice and useful can't argue with that Next one is phthalo green. Now, when you mix phthalo green with lemon yellow, you get the most delightful lime greens. And when mixed with cerulean hue, you get this lovely turquoise here. Transparent green became sap green because transparent green can be achieved by mixing phthalo green with lemon yellow. And I didn't want to duplicate or overlap. 
Yellow ochre. I don't think I've ever had a set that doesn't have yellow ochre in it. Just uber useful. Um, burnt sienna. Again, very, very useful. Very versatile colour. I was torn between that and Venetian red for a while. And burnt umber and Payne's grey bluish. Now, burnt umber instead of sepia, just because I prefer the richness of burnt umber. So that's what I went with in the end. And then finally, we have Payne's grey bluish, which in all its different dilutions can do anything for you from the palest of light grey to something approaching, well, pretty much black, really. So now that I'd chosen, it was time to get me some paints. And the next step was to buy the colours in question. And yes, I had to buy them. That, that, that sharpened my focus a little bit. And I realised that I actually had loads of tubes of the colours, the exact colours in question. I had them in, in my studio, which was a real pointer to the fact that I was already thinking those were my colours. They were my colours that I was using, that I found useful. So even though I would have loved to have come up with a completely different and unusual palette, what's the point if there is an actual palette that you find that you yourself use a lot? So, I mean, there's a reason why you stick with certain colours because they, 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 they're very versatile and so on. So let's have a look and see what, okay, I came up with. Now, here's the little box of colours itself. I know it doesn't look great. I don't like the way, aesthetically, I don't like the way some are full pan and some are half pan. But that's because I had to buy the full pans from um, from Universal Art Supplies and uh, the squidgy little ones in the half pans. They're the ones I squeezed out myself from my existing tubes. So let's see how I got on. So I got myself a croissant and as always, I start with whatever's closest to me. Now, I didn't quite get to the croissant before I took a few bites, as you can see there. And then I got on to get you my coffee. I always try to get the coffee in before it gets cold so I can drink it. And I always fail. A little bit of burnt sienna for the top creamy surface of the flat white, adding a little bit of richer uh, burnt sienna in, a bit of paints grey for the shadow around the croissant and around the cup. Wood grain always looks really, really good when you when you manage to capture the look of a table. And basically it's just a pile of zigzaggy lines with long straight bits in between. Using a very dilute watercolour to get the shapes of the lamps, it really helps to get them straight. And then I go over them with my pen drawing some patterns on the blackboards. I really liked those blackboards, They're beautifully done. To get the look of the light, I need to darken around the, bri the very bright light bulbs. And I'm using a little bit of a mix of quinacridone red light with a little bit of transparent orange. So I've been busy getting the customers in and filling in the blackboard and the darker, the better so that your white writing shows up. I've used a, a white gel pen to show those little suggestions of writing onto the blackboard. Using, I suppose, a rainbow colour for the bottles on the shelf, just to have a little bit of extra colour. And there we go, pretty much it. So there you go. I hope you approve of my colour choices in my new little palette. I think it came out pretty okay. There wasn't any colour that I thought I'd like to make that I wasn't able to make but that was only my first go with this palette. So there'll be lots more. So make sure to like and subscribe and you'll be able to keep up with whatever my final verdict is. And just in case you didn't know, Ruben and I would like to tell you that I offer sketching classes twice a week, live online and always recorded. So you can join us wherever you are in the world.